Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I'm playing with a bunch of the new elements in the Simon Says Stamp December 2017 card kit that if you haven't seen my unboxing video, um, I'm rather excited about this kit. So I die cut the Nina Desert Storm cardstock from the kit with the Simon Says Large Tags Wafer Dies, and I am putting them in my Misty. You don't need a Misty to do this. It just kind of simplified things since I was doing so many. But I'm stamping all the main images, aka like the characters from the set, onto the tag with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then without re-inking the image, I am um, putting a piece of my post-it tape roll over top of the image and then closing the lid of the Misty again. That way I've got it on my post-it tape and I can cut it out and create a mask. Now masks like this, I use multiple times, I save them, like I'm only going to use it once for this, for each image for this project, but then I'm going to put it on the backing sheet the stamps come in, and then the next time I go to use this set, if I want to do any masking, I can just reuse the mask, I don't have to, you know, spend all the time cutting out um, these over and over again. And masks, I can use them multiple times until, it's only once ink starts seeping through that you, you know, you've used up the mask that it's time to toss it and get another one. So I get quite a bit of use out of them this way. So with the Santa, I didn't even bother cutting out the entire thing because I only need the one side. If down the road I need the others, you know, the whole image, I can quickly just trim that off. But I place my mask now over that stamped image and then I'm going to stamp the tree. So this is going to make it so that the Santa is in front of the tree. Whatever image you want in the front is the one you want to mask. So you want to stamp that first, mask it, and then everything else you stamp is going to appear behind it. So I did that with all of these tags. I just kept repeating the process. So for the next tag, I'm going to put this little Mrs. Claus. And I used my first tag to kind of get um, the spacing proper so that I had it, you know, higher up. Since I'm doing multiples, I wanted to make these as simple as possible. So I did the exact same thing. Um, inked her up to the VersaFine Onyx Black ink, stamped her onto the tag. And then without re-inking it, I just put the piece of post-it tape down and then stamped it onto that. And then trimmed that out with my scissors so that I can mask her off and then stamp the tree in the background again. So I did that with um, the Santa Claus, the Mrs. Claus, the puppy dog image, and the cat image. So all together I'm going to have four fun little tags. And now that I'm done this, I kind of wish I had done multiples of each um, while I was working on it, like done several of each, you know, Santa Claus tag, Mrs. Claus tag, et cetera, et cetera, because I was thinking these would be really fun to give the kids uncolored and let them color them in. That would just have been fun. So just an idea, you know, to do up a little batch of fun little tags with these cute little images and, you know, give it with a box of pencil crayons or something or colored pencils. We call them pencil crayons in Canada, you know, a box of pencil crayons and let them, you know, have fun coloring in these images because they're just, they're cute. So I use my Prismacolor crayons, um, color pencils, I keep wanting to call them color, ah, pencil crayons, oi, Prismacolor color pencils I use to color in all these images. It's still my go-to favorite on um, like Desert Storm or a craft cardstock for colored pencils. I had a lot of people asking me about that recently, like do I like coloring on dark cardstock or light cardstock? Desert Storm's my favorite. And then dark cardstocks. I did another Christmas video already where I colored on gray, but then I used my um, odorless mineral spirits to blend it out. And I, I do prefer darker though than using white cardstock. With white cardstock, you don't have as much leeway. You don't have as much give. Um, I really prefer this Desert Storm because it kind of helps. It just enhances the color in my opinion. Plus the little bit of texture just works with the colored pencils. So I didn't use any odorless mineral spirits on these. I'm just using just the colored pencils. And I'm generally using about three different shades of each color, starting with a really light layer of my lightest. Then I added in a little bit of the medium color and then the darkest, go back with medium, go back with the lightest, almost the same sort of method you would use with like markers. So I just went along and did each tag with this, whatever color I'm working on to do everything all at the same time while I have the pencil in my hand. So like I did all the trees at once, all the trunks at once. After I did the trunks, I did the dog in the same colors. And then for Mrs. Claus's hair, I was using grays, so I decided to do the cat in grays. It just kind of saves me a little bit of time. So I'm just going along and like I said, working from lightest to darkest and back again a little bit. So I did my grays and then I went into the skin tone on Mrs. Claus and Santa Claus here. So just added in um, a really just a skin color and then a little bit of a brown and then some pink for their cheeks, of course, and for his nose. And then blended that back out with the skin color. And then 
um, went in and started doing all the reds, quite a bit of reds here. I decided to color in all of the little bubbles or like ornaments on the tree. Um, do I'm going to do different colors for these, but the sequins, the little like confetti pack that comes in the kit is sized perfectly to cover these, but I really wanted to color them in. I just thought it would be a fun little extra something. So again, going in, doing all the lightest colors on every single image, then the medium color. Um, with the reds, I only used two, but if I really wanted to de deepen it up and give it that dimension, if you add a little bit of brown to the darkest areas or like a really red, really deep red brown, like almost a mahogany color, that really does give it an extra bit of dimension. But I decided to keep it as simple as possible after doing all this coloring. So I did the reds and then I added in some turquoise color and then I'm going to add in some pink. This is, I'm following kind of the colors of the doodle bug. Um, pattern papers that also come in the kit that I'm obsessed with. <laughs> Anyone who knows me, if you've watched me for any length of time, you know, I like to hoard my doodle bug. I don't use it very often, but I like to collect it and hoard it and pet it. And you know, it, it's just, it's my thing. So I went in and added pink. I used the turquoise for the dog's color. And then I used the pink for the bow around the little kitten's um, neck. I thought that'd be really cute. So um, colored in all of that blended it back out and then I went in and added just a really nice yellow to the star of all of these trees as well as some yellow to um, Santa's belt buckle and the little, um, well it looks like a bell but the little tag hanging from the dog's collar. And then at the very end I went in with my white. I did white last because I wanted it to be the last one so I don't end up accidentally um, rubbing any residue on it while I was coloring all the other colors. So I always save white for very the very last if I can when I'm doing any sort of color pencil coloring. So just went in, added that, and that kind of makes everything pop. So once I'm done with all the coloring, I took my Secura black glaze pen and just dotted that on the eyes of all the images. That kind of makes it pop a little more. Then I took one of my Copic multi-liners and just outlined um, the little smiles and the whiskers and the smile on the cat. Really, if you wanted to, you could outline all of these images and it would make the outline, the stamp outline images pop again because the colored pencils do kind of obscure the lines. But I decided to kind of forego that because at this point I had spent a fair bit of time coloring and um, I knew I had some more I wanted to do. So I'm going in with my white gel pen now and adding little highlights to all the different areas, little polka dots to her apron, and that just makes everything pop. And then as an afterthought, I went in with my um, Wink of Stella clear glitter pen and added that to all these images. Now, if you're going to use a glitter pen, use it before the gel pen. The glitter pen, it, in a way, it almost eats the white gel pen. You can't see it on here because I'm literally avoiding trying to touch any of the areas where the white gel pen is because the Wink of Stella, I don't know if all glitter pens do this, but this one especially, it will smear it everywhere. It's weird. So I would add, if I was going to do these again, I'd do the glitter first, then add all my little white gel highlights, but it's got a nice fun little touch of glitter on everything. So after I'm done all my coloring, I ran through two of the pattern papers with just the bottoms of these tag dies because the bottoms are slightly rounded. So I've got the little pieces of pattern paper with the bottoms all rounded because I'd run them through my die cut machine. And then I just used my um, Tim Holtz paper trimmer to trim these so that they're just under, so it almost looks like all these characters and the trees are standing on top of them. And then I took some white cardstock. I put it back in my Misty here so I can stamp sentiments from that same Christmas squad stamp set. So I'm going to stamp it once along the top this first sentiment and then I'm just going to shift the paper upwards so I can stamp it again. So I'll have two of this sentiment stamped in a row and then once I have those stamped I'm going to switch to a second sentiment and do the exact same thing. So I've got all four sentiments on one piece of paper and then I can trim these out with my trimmer all in one shot as well. So just again Misty isn't totally necessary for this but I had it out so I thought I would use it. So um, had both first sentiments inked up, stamped, now the second sentiment, making sure before I close the lid that everything's kind of lined up there and then I'm going to shift this up, make sure it works before closing the lid, didn't, shifted it up a little bit more, then I can ink it up, press it close and now I have all my sentiments. So now I can just put these back into my paper trimmer and just trim these into little strips. So now that I've got all my strips of pattern paper and my sentiments, I can start adhering all these to my cards. So I'm just doing kind of my mass production style, doing all the same um, steps all at once because it just saves time. So I'm going to adhere all the pattern paper at once. And then once that's all adhered, I'm going to start adhering my sentiments. 
I decided um, to put the sentiments in different spots depending on the tag and whatnot. I had, you know, kind of diver- dithered on different ideas of, you know, popping these up with phone tape, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Instead, I just decided to cut little flag ends on just one end of each tag and adhere them flat to each card. So for the puppy one, I adhered it um, in the open area there on the top. And then the other ones, I just adhered right below the images on top of the pattern paper. And any little bits that were hanging over, I'm just going to trim off with my scissors. So I'm just going to repeat this over and over again until all four have their sentiments on them. So I just cut a notch down the center and then meet up each corner with the end of that little notch that I cut with my scissors. And that creates my little flag end. And then a little bit of Nouveau adhesive on that. I can press that into place, making sure the sentiment doesn't hang over the edge of the tag so that when I flip this over, I'm not cutting my sentiment. And then using the edge of the tag as my guide to trim off the excess there. So after I did that, I went through my stash. And of course, I have a ton of doodle twine. Um, I've been hoarding this for years. I do use this on occasion. I have quite a bit of it. So I went through my stash and got several lengths of it in different colors and folded it over and then ran it through the holes in the tags. And then you just pull the um, ends through the loop and it's attached to all these tags. So I've got a nice, big, long, gorgeous bit of Baker's twine in all of these tags. And I wasn't originally going to add the um, confetti to these, but the confetti was so pretty. I thought it'd be fun just to add a few. Like I said, you could totally cover up all the little um, ornaments on the tree with these. So you wouldn't have to color them at all. So if you don't want to spend the time coloring, just cover them with this and it would look absolutely adorable. But since I did all the coloring, I didn't want to cover them. So I only put one on each tree and then two other ones, you know, randomly onto kind of each tag. And I'm just putting dabs of multi-medium matte adhesive down and then picking up the little confetti with my um, crystal katana and then pressing it into the adhesive. And that's going to finish these off. I had so much fun making these. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will have a link below the video to my blog post with the pictures, links to all of the supplies used, etc, etc. So just check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate the support and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!